Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com with a brand new release, 2023 Topps Chrome Platinum Anniversary Baseball, 12 box, pick your team number two, an entire case, and big thanks to this group for making it happen. Here on a Wednesday, the 22nd hump day. Hump day. Bradley with Last Bot Mojo. And we got a few winners in that capstone pack. Congrats. Thanks everybody for getting in. We've got another case in the store. It's almost halfway there. We got time to run that, sell it and run it tonight if you want. Now, as I, uh, as I like to say every baseball season, you know, I break down the season into thirds. Let me just adjust uh, some camera stuff here. Break it down to thirds. And so usually the first two months of the season, I kind of learned it from Vince Scully many, many moons ago, where he kind of breaks, he breaks down the season by thirds. The first two months, he was talking about it more in terms of like, you know, what teams are doing and what they're looking for. First two months, teams are kind of seeing, hey, what do we got? Who do we have? You know, especially for the less established players. The next two months are figuring out, all right, now, now that we've identified what we got, what we need in the first two months of the season, now we can figure out what, what we need to do to acquire players before the deadline. And then the final two months, just a stretch run. Who's gonna finish the season strong and healthy and prepare for the playoffs? So now, I mean, May 22nd, Rex reminded me, we are pretty much at the two month mark. Some teams are at their 50th game already. I think if you take an exact third of 162 game season, I think it'd be like 53 games or something like that. So we're right there. Third of the first third of the season is done. I've not really paid too close attention to the standings. So I'm gonna go and look at that right now. Now in my head, the AL East, I thought the Orioles were in first place, but no. The Yankees are 34 and 17, three games ahead of the O's. Then it's the Red Sox, then it's the Rays, then it's the Blue Jays. I guess I'm a little, what jumps out at me here? I guess I'm a little surprised that the Red Sox are doing as well as they are. Hearing from their fans, you would think that, that you know, they did absolutely nothing in the off which they didn't really do much in the off season, but they're playing over 500 baseball. I guess maybe the Blue Jays being as bad as they are with 20, they're 22 and 26. Probably not that bad, but I thought they'd be a little bit more competitive. That AL East is brutal though. It's gonna be one of those divisions where every team might be well over 500 and, you know, and there's gonna be teams that are gonna be in third or fourth, fifth place, fourth or fifth place with a over 500 record. They may be in first in many other divisions. All right, here's box one. We'll take, we'll take a look at the other different divisions as we rip open some boxes. So these are all facsimile autographs, so, so I'm not breezing by autos, just remember that. These are different parallels right here. Um, but the, oh, there's the number, 23 out of 50. But the actual autos will be will be in blue ink. They could really mess this up and start doing black ink, but thankfully they did not. Gold Freddie Freeman will go to David M and the Dodgers. So we're highlighting what year was this again? Riffer? 53? 54? Doesn't this kind of mimic that design? Or I guess maybe some of the inserts mimic that design?
All right, here's the mini diamonds, 11 out of 75, numbers right there, 1954. There we go. Thanks, guys. Uh, that's uh, Bly Madras. That's going to go to Aaron and the Astros. There's a Topps logo fractor background, 260 out of 499. That's uh, Paul Goldschmidt for the Cardinals. That's going to be Jeff Walker. Uh, that was a Hank Aaron, Al Kaline, Ernie Banks rookie year. It's a nice set. There's a uh, Phillies right here, 40 out of 50 gold wave. Kyle Schwarber going to Sean Gola and the Fighting Phils. There's our auto, Tyler Freeman. Rookie auto for the Guardians. Cleveland, this is for you. And that's Patrick with Cleveland. Nice. And I'll do an autograph, you know, and low number or hit, you know, do a uh, recap at the end. There's Trevor Story, logo fractor background to 499. That's going to be for uh, Chris and the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, check that drawer. That purple one should be, yeah. Do you suck them or do you? Uh, yeah. What else would you do with a lozenge? You don't swallow it. 72 out of 99, Edwin Diaz. Doesn't work, it doesn't protect the throat. That's gonna go to Stephen K and the Mets. Um, that's Mel Ott for the New York Giants. All right, nice first box. Onwards. Uh, AL Central. Guess it's, uh, what jumps out at me, the AL Central? It's Guardians, I think Royals. The Royals winning, having 32, are 32 and 19. I know they're playing, you know, you know I'm a, playing fantasy baseball and all this. So I know they're, some of their individuals were playing well. That's resulted in wins. They're one and a half back of the Guardians. And it's Twins, Tigers, and White Sox. You know, previous years I would say, you know, White Sox always look good on paper, dot, 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 but they, they just haven't proven it. So they're not even good on paper anymore. They gotta figure something out. Might, might need a team refresh. Might need a might need to just move on from some of these, you know, players who seem to be oft injured. You know, some of the young prospects getting injured a lot. Maybe they could, you know, may may see new life in a different uh, in a different uniform. Maybe they can. I think they have some decent prospects though. But the, the Guardians have been playing some good baseball. I think, I think they were a team where on paper you're like, there's a lot of talent on paper. And now it's showing up on the field too. They've got a nice, nice run differential as well, plus 65. Royals have a plus 72 run differential. So I think that, that's gonna be a battle for the AL Central. I think preseason, I saw some interviews with some of the Royals players, you know, like Bobby Wood Jr. got a, got a big extension last off season or the one before that. You know, other guys, other youngsters being locked up, some players having some nice seasons. I think I saw a, a uh, an interview with, I think, with Vinny Pascantino, I think, on the Royals. And, and he was just like, 
he's, he was just like, you know, the team's feeling really confident. You know, he, he said preseason, I think we're going to surprise some people. There's Jared Schuster, 52 out of 100, Shimmer. So that, that's definitely a team that has surprised me. And I thought, man, maybe, you know, maybe they'd, they'd be in third place or something like that. Competitive, but maybe not, not the Ws, but they're getting the dubs. There's David Hensley, Green Wave, one, uh, one, th one nine out of 99, 1999, Prince. For what, for what? Yeah, this is Rex's favorite part. Rex loves talking standings. Day one, he's talking standing. Who's in first, blah, blah, blah. It's two, two days into the season, this team's in first place. Uh, Royals in the AL Central. 40 out of 150, Blake Sable. It's gonna be for the Giants. But now, now, we're two, now we're two months in, third of the way in. I think we can really start diving into these into the team's records, where they're on the standings. I, I need to look at uh, stats too. I don't, I don't even know who's leading the league in anything. There's Joe Ryan, 44 out of 199. We'll do the AL West in the next box. And there's the autograph, Garrett Mitchell, rookie auto. For the Brew Crew, that's gonna be for Zachary. Uh, Garrett Mitchell got hit on the wrist in like the last week of spring training. He was, he was going to be a starting outfielder for the Brewers. But got hit on the wrist and has been knocked out for pretty much two months, the entire season. He hasn't played a single game this season. He might come off the IL in a, I don't know, soon-ish? There's Vinny Pascantino. 69 out of 100. His ears were burning. We were talking about him. Bradley with the Royals. Rookie Gunnar Henderson. Remember, this is 2023 edition. And another auto, a bonus auto. Jose Buto, 34 out of 50. Gold auto for the Mets. Stephen K. with the bonus. I think it's only one Ottawa box. Not a, we're not at the AL West yet, Rex. We gotta have some order here. There's Rhino. One out of 50 for the Cubs. That's gonna be Charles. There's Jared Walsh, right there, uh, not number. Right, that's right, Rex, nobody wanted the Mets, and it looks like look, they get a bonus auto out of here. They're just sitting there. All right, next box, next division. Now we're in the AL West, Rex. Uh, Mariners, Rangers, Astros, A's, and Angels. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. I, I, can, I, 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 can, I can translate, Rex. You know what you mean. Uh, Mariners, with just a plus one run differential, is leading that division by three games ahead of the Rangers. I think, I think their, their pitching has been really good. It's been keeping them in ball games. If their offense wakes up a little bit, you know, that could be, that could be a dangerous team. Yeah, Rex is surprised at the Astros. They're 22 and 28. I guess that's a little, I guess it's a little surprising. 
don't know if I would have bet on the Astros being where they are at this point. I don't know if it surprises me though. I feel like, I feel like you know, they they've got some uh, some younger pieces integrating with some aging pieces. I think they've been hit with a lot of injuries. I think their pitching hasn't really been doing well. But that's a team where if they can, over the next two months, if they can get their, their pitching in order, I feel like they're going to start winning some games. In fact, I think they're seven, they've won seven of their last ten. Exactly, yeah. They've been dominant for the last seven, eight years, so that really should... That, I mean, you said it yourself. It shouldn't be a surprise, because then... You know, you start to see production tail off from some players. It's hard to, it's hard to be dominant for six, seven, eight years. It's not easy. Requires good farm system, deep pockets. All right, we'll do NL East next. Here's uh, Michael Stefanik, 12 out of 99. Angels, that's for Larry. Speaking of the Angels, I mean, I think no surprise where they're at now, but um, I, think, I think Joe Adele has been playing playing well. You know, he's getting more time because Mike Trout yet again injured. Here's King Felix, 138 out of 199 for Seattle, Jeff Walker. But Joe Adele might get the... I got I to gotta look at his numbers a little more closely, but he might be a good dust off his rookies. Candidate. I don't know how how the uh, secondary market has been reacting to uh, to him, but I think he's been playing pretty well. Here's Robin Yount, tops logo fractor background, two eighty four out of four ninety nine for the Brew Crew. That's going to be for Zachary. I feel like these facsimile autographs kind of kind of trick me a little bit. Just got to look for blue. We've got Speckle, Alan Trammell, 126 out of 150. And there's the auto, another Guardian, Bo Naylor, rookie auto. Cleveland, this is for you. Patrick with the Guardians got Cleveland straight up. And EA with Detroit. Look at the Allen Trammell. Oh yeah, Rex. Yeah, take take a look at the secondary market. Maybe, maybe. there's Nelson Velasquez, 51 out of 19. Although I feel like people in burn with Joe Adele so much, I feel like I feel like they'll have to put together a full season before before the needle gets moved significantly in the hobby. Got A-Rod, Alex Rodriguez, Mariners edition, 74 out of 100. That's gonna be for Jeff and the Mariners. We got playoff basketball on the background. Uh, Minnesota up two on Dallas. 335 left in the third. I feel like this has been a good game. There's been some, some lead changes. There's Teoscar Hernandez, Mariners edition, doing great for my Dodgers. All right, next box. Yeah, I think there's been a few lead changes in this game, a number of lead changes here. Oh, bonus? That's cool. All right, let's go into the NL East. You know, I thought the Braves were in first place. But no, the Phillies, oh, that's the Cityscape City Variation Pack. Nice, thanks, Evan. Uh, but no, the Phillies are up six games on the Braves. They're 36 and 14, Braves are only 28 and 18. Thanks, Stephen K, thanks, Riffer. Uh, the Phillies, is, that might be a league-leading run differential. It is. They've got a plus 90 run differential. They're on a five-game winning streak. 
I don't know what, I don't know if they played today, but. Wow. What's been working for the Phillies? Everything, it seems. Pitching and hitting. They've got a league leading 272 runs scored. And well, they've given up, they're, they're kind of, it looks like in the, just at a glance, maybe middle of the pack on runs allowed, but with all those runs scored, that doesn't matter. Plus 90 run differential. Braves have plus 46, which is really good, but. Yeah, that offense is just relentless. Uh, then the Nats, Nat, I guess, Nationals, 21 and 27, a little under 500. I guess that's kind of a surprise. They're, they're half a game ahead of the Mets, which is, I guess, another surprise. And then Marlins, not a surprise. Riffer says no, unfortunately. I feel like I remember Rex saying that Nolan Ryan in these Topps products are rarely a Met or an Angel. It's almost always a Ranger or an Astro. And even then, mostly a Ranger, I think. the NL Central after this in the next box. There's uh, Alan Trammell, 166 out of 199. Oh, Angel in this one, interesting. It's gonna go to EA and the Tigers. Josh Young for the Rangers will go to Brian H. Yeah, had, this card had some girl's name on it, Baby Ruth. Babe Ruth, the Colossus of Clout, the Sultan of Swat. There's Hank Aaron, 276 out of 499. Bravos, that'll be for Chris and the Braves. Beyond Kirsch is Fernando Tatis Jr. 115 out of 199 blue mini diamonds. Who's got the Friars? Brian H. with the Padres. Now the Mavs are up by a point. And we've got a Kyle Schwarber to 150. And the auto is Michael Stefanik. 89 out of 99, rookie auto for the Halos. That'll be for Larry. We got another case of this in the store right now. We got time to do it tonight. I'm liking all the, uh, I well I like the design. I like the different parallel, a lot of different parallels you can chase. 357 out of 499. I like the uh, the big portrait style photos, little action there. Just a variation, I don't know, but Tommy Henry flipped around. That's going to go to Jeff and the Diamondbacks. Yeah, get into the next one. The next case, pick your team three in the store right now. Jaspiescasebreaks.com. There's Drew Waters, 192 out of 199. Bradley with the Royals. These ones are not numbered. All right, so these are the, uh, the Cityscape City variation pack, one per case. Nice. 
So you can see the, that city look in the background there. I'm assuming some of these can be autographed as well. Here's Carlos Correa for the Twins. That's for Chad. Here is Manny Machado for the Padres. That's going to go to Brian H. I think the only Brian in this break. Vlad Guerrero Jr. These are kind. Of, these are kind of cool. I dig the the city background there. No parallels outside of base refractors, but it's a hundred card set. Be a nice one to to build. For you set builders out there, I know they're still out there somewhere. Toronto, Henry, with the Blue Jays and Oscar Colas for the White Sox. That's for Brian. Nice. That was pretty cool. All right, next box, next division. This is Rex's division. Most of you regulars know that he's a Cubs guy. Uh, but the Brewers are in first place. They're 28 and 21, game and a half ahead of the Cubs. They've got a plus 38 run differential, best in the division. I guess that's a surprise. I feel like, you know, with management upheaval, you know, but I guess they got some young prospects that are really good. But like no Corbin Burns, everyone, I think a lot of people did not expect. I mean, they started the season hot, I think. And, you know, but then you just go, well, it's early, right? And then, but here, here we are, a third of the way through the season, and they're, they're 28 and 21. Slumping a little bit in the last week or so. They're only four wins out of their last 10. So I guess that, that's, the, that's the sort of surprise in that division. I suppose the Cardinals being 23 and 26 is a bit of a surprise, but we kind of saw what happened last year, so maybe... Maybe not as big of a surprise as, as we uh, think. Now, we've talked about it throughout the season, but the Cubs only plus two on that run differential. The relief pitching kind of letting them down a little bit. They got to figure something out there if they want to they want to be competitive. Especially as, I mean, weather starts to get warmer, balls start to jump a little bit off the bats and go out of the ballpark. You know, that's it's not, not good for, not good for a, uh, a struggling bullpen. Yeah, they are doing just fine. No, Jonathan, I'm afraid not, actually. I looked, we only have one more case, pick your team three, and that is it. I mean, we might get more, but there's no, no assurance that, uh, that they'll be at the same price. It might be more. All right, onwards. Uh, there's Spencer Steer, Logo Fractor to 499. And that'll be for Jacob and the Reds. Reds in last place in the NL Central. And it's Ivan Herrera to 499. Yes, yes, it is. And behind Tristan McKenzie is a Jazz Chisholm, 51 out of 75. What are the Marlins going to do? If, I feel like they got a... Are they blowing it up? I feel like Jazz guys like Jazz Chisholm might be running out of uh, Rick with Miami, or maybe running out of arbitration years. Could be hitting free agency at some point. There's Alec Manoa, who I think has put together a couple nice starts in a row. Maybe he's getting things back on track. Then there's a Simeon Woods Richardson. Eight, uh, 91, that is, out of 199. He's doing all right this season. Chad uh, with the Twins.
Alec Minot will go to Henry in Toronto. We got a Miguel Vargas flipped around. I don't know if that's a variation, but he just got called back up uh, with the Dodgers a couple days ago. Hey, you're welcome, Rick. Uh, this will go to David. And uh, I think had a double last night. I don't think he's playing tonight. We'll do a score update in a, in a moment, too. Yeah, he's not in the lineup tonight, but but uh, he's been playing a lot of left field. I know, what does it say there? Second, third base on the, uh, on the baseball card. That's his rookie card, too. But... He's been, I think he's played almost all of um, his minor league games this year in, in the outfield. 27 out of 50 on that Andres Jimenez. And we got a Andrew McCutcheon, logo fracture. Kutch, 170 out of 499. These are really cool looking. Pirates, that's gonna go to Robert, Robert J with that. We got a Bobby Wood Jr. And now with this box, we can go into the NL West, my division. And the Dodgers are leading the division, 33 wins, 18 losses, seven and a half games ahead of the Padres. Nothing surprising there. I think the only thing that's surprising is, is that there's no one challenging the Dodgers for the division, which I don't like. Because I feel like the I, I need the Dodgers to go on like, a losing streak. I need some teams to be, you know, running them down, you know, chasing them. I feel like they need to play with a little adversity. So they can learn how to work through adversity when it comes playoff time. Are they? No, it's uh... How many wild cards are there now? Three? I think Braves have the first wild card spot. Cubs have the second wild card spot. Padres have the third wild card spot. And the Giants are a game be behind. Giants, Diamondbacks, and Diamondbacks and Cardinals are a game and a half behind. Pirates are two behind. And that wild card race is still still alive. I mean, usually we're not going to see any separation there until like the last month of the season. I feel like I feel like that's the way it's been the last couple of seasons. Um, stats. I've not been paying attention to any statistics here. So far, in the AL, Salvador Perez is hitting 337. I have Jeremy Pena on my fancy team. I did not realize his 326 average so far is second best in the AL. Nice. Aaron Judge, 16 doubles already. Usually, I think usually 20 is okay. 30 is solid, 40 is awesome. So Aaron Judge hitting a bunch of doubles. That's good. Triples, Jaron Durant leading, uh, leading the AL in triples with eight, Bobby Witt second. Kyle Tucker has 17 home runs. Wow, leading the uh, leading the AL. Gunnar Henderson has 16. Aaron Judge 14. Juan Soto 13. Etc. 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 Kyle Tucker has 17 home runs. 
Jose Ramirez, 45 RBIs, leads the AL. And that's not super surprising. Juan Soto is 40. Salvador Perez is 39. I know Ellie De La Cruz has been stealing a lot of bases, a lot of theft for him, but who's doing it in the AL? Jose Caballero has uh, 18 stolen bases. Yeah, that short porch helping out Kyle Tucker, for first saying. Followed by Bobby Witt with 16. Luis Rengifo for the Angels with 12. Another Jazz Chisholm Orange, 25. Royals have three players in the top five stolen bases. Bobby Witt Jr., Michael Garcia, and Darian Blanco. All with double-digit steals. It's kind of Feels like a little, little old school baseball there. I like that we're kind of getting more action on base paths. We got Brooks Robinson. 17 out of 499. Victor with the O's. And not surprisingly, Kyle Tucker also leads the uh, AL in OPS with over 1,000, 1060. There's Brandon Hughes, 57 out of uh, 499. I feel like the Cubs need to draft uh, a John Hughes. That's a rookie Corbin Carroll. It's 2023. There's Shea Langliers, 186 out of 199. A's, that'll be for Kevin. Corbin Carroll will go to Jeff. He's a bit of a sophomore slump for him this year. And the act, Dennis Eckersley. 144 out of 150, making great use of the canvas there. That teal pops really nicely. Nice hit for Kevin and the A's. We got Mark Teixeira to 75. Old Ranger going to Brian. Here is Wilson Contreras, 243 out of 499 for the Redbirds. Be for Jeff. Whitey Ford, Robin Yount. And we are about halfway through this break. Got about another, well, we're at the 38 minute mark, maybe another. 35 minutes to go. And not surprisingly, Kyle Tucker leads the AL and wins above replacement, three and a half. Bobby Witt Jr., Gunnar Henderson, 3-3, three, three. Jaron Duran, three. AL pitching, Seth Lugo with a 179 ERA and a seven and one record. Did anyone have that on their bingo card? I mean, he's been in the league a minute or two. His, his high in wins was last year with only eight. I guess he wasn't really, does, was he not starting with the Mets? I guess he wasn't. Seth Lugo, a sub two ERA. Seven and one, 58 strikeouts over 65 and a, uh, 65 and a third innings. About eight, his K per nine is about eight. And a sub one whip. Wow. Tariq Skubal having a nice season. I feel like I feel like he was a favorite for, preseason favorite for Cy Young, but he's got a one eight ERA, six and zero. Oh. 
double digit K per nine and a sub eight whip. They're about, Seth Luga is about 0.1 ahead of him in wins above replacements. That's gonna be an interesting Cy Young uh, race to watch. Tanner Hawk has a 4-5 win-loss record for the Red Sox, but sub-2 ERA. He's having a nice year. The Tigers have two guys that are in the top five in the ERA. In the ERA. Just, because they're just not hitting. Maybe a crappy bullpen, too. We'll get some NL stats after this. So who's our, I, I guess, the third of the way through the season, like Seth Lugo, Tariq Skubal are your early Cy Young award. Let's see, let's see how they last through the summer. But especially Seth Lugo, I mean, they're, they're gonna, gonna face warmer temperatures. And uh, balls jumping off the bats. But so far, they're the early Cy Young favorites. I guess, you know, I guess Kyle Tucker. Bobby Witt Jr., Gunnar Henderson are your early favorites for, uh, for AL MVP. We got a Joe Maurer, 75. Bobby Miller's making his way back off the IL pretty soon. There's a Tanner Beebe, 82 out of 99. It'll be for Cleveland. This is for you. Got card spilling everywhere. Jock Peterson hitting a 3-1 homer for the Diamondbacks against my Dodgers last night. And we got Prince Fielder, 412 out of 499. For the Brew Crew, that's for Zachary. Phillies, no Trey Turner, no problem. Got the auto coming up, but here's Estuary Ruiz, 92 out of 150, speckled for Kevin and the A's. And we got Graham Ashcraft. Rookie auto for the Reds, that'll be for Jacob. And now we got Dallas with the lead, 93-89. It's a basketball game here. Eight minutes left in the fourth. 95-89. Right, you can hear in the background, 11-0 run. And there is... Cody Sedlock, 177 out of 199. Blue mini diamonds for the Orioles, that'll be for Victor. There's Jose Buto, 43 out of 100. Stephen Kay and the Mets. All right, next box, NL stats. If you go wins above replacement, Mookie Betts, 3-4, Otani, 3-2. Very close. Go by the traditional traditional stats, Otani. Otani's hitting 356. Yurikson Profar's hitting 339. William Contreras hitting 333. Alec Bohm leads the uh, 
leaves the NL, maybe the even the majors with 20 doubles already, tripled as well. CJ Abrams leading the league with four, or uh, leading the A NL with four triples. Marcelo Zuna has 15 home runs. Otani has 13, Bryce Harper has 12, Teoscar has 11, Pete Alonso has 11. Marcelo Zuna, Alec Baum, William Contreras, Bryce Harper, Teoscar, Shohei, those are your RBI leaders in the NL. Is there a, is there a shot that Shohei Otani could get a triple crown? You know, I know the Dodgers have an embarrassment of riches, but uh, their seven, eight, nine hitters uh, are not are, uh, are are a weak point. And I think defensively, maybe third base, shortstop second around there, I think is is a bit of a weak point as well. But offensively. Seven, eight, and nine, a bit of a weak point. So maybe Otani's not seeing a lot of runners ahead of him by the time he gets out as the game goes on. He's also struggled a little bit early in the season with runners in scoring position, but I think he's turning that around too. I think there's a case for Otani to maybe go after a triple crown. Yeah, and then Ellie Dela Cruz has 30 steals already. Otani's more than like him betting on the on a triple crown. Rex is saying another tired betting joke related to Otani. Joe Maurer, three out of ninety-nine twins. We got Jacob DeGrom to 199, blue mini diamonds. That's going to go to Texas, Brian. It's a cool Mariano Rivera, 39 out of 150. Speckle, Edward with the Yankees. Yeah, Cody Bellinger, 005 out of 199, a little color match there. Charles with the Cubbies. And there's the autograph. Swaggy T, Travis Swaggerty, rookie auto for the Pirates. Robert J with the Pirates. Won that in the filler. We got an Estuary Ruiz, 64 out of 100. A's, Kevin M. Another Mariano Rivera. For Riffer, eight out of 50. These are cool parallels here. Another box. Ellie Dela Cruz, Ellie Dela Cruz, if healthy, he's stealing 100 bases this year, right?
could Shota Imanaga win Rookie of the Year and a Cy Young? Who's the last? Who's the last? I think did didn't, didn't Fernando Valenzuela do that? Or no? I think Ichiro has done it. Ichiro won MVP and Rookie of the Year the first year. Anyway, he's got an 8-4 ERA. 9-7K per 9, a 3 war, sub 1 whip. I think somewhat more surprising is Ranger Suarez. Who has a 1-3-6 ERA, 9-0. 9-3-K for 9-7-9 whip. 2-8 war. So that's a couple points behind Imanaga. I don't know if, I, don't know if I thought that was going to happen. Reynaldo Lopez has a 1-5-4 ERA. Javier Assad, another Cubs starter. 1-7 ERA. They, they should just put those two into the, in the bullpen. Chris Sale, the Red Sox fans hate this. Chris Sale, a 2.22 ERA, 7 and 1, 11.1 K per nine, 0.86 WHIP. So there, there are some, there, there are some contenders here for the Cy Young, NL Cy Young. Jordan Hicks has a 2.38 ERA. I, he, I feel like a lot of people. He was signed late. Your strikeout leaders, that's uh, Tyler Glass now, 81. Dylan C, 73. Zach Wheeler, 71. Chris Sale, 70, so on and so forth. Ricky, Ricky Henderson doesn't like Ellie De La Cruz? Did he really come out and say that? And I feel like breaking 100 is one thing, but I think Ricky Henderson was regularly feeling well north of 100. Yeah, Rick Anderson has had 130 steal seasons, 108 earlier in his career. Wow, 15 to one run for the Timberwolves. Now they're up, 102.98, what a game. A lot of lead changes here. Here's a Gunnar Henderson. Two out of 50, rookie card for Victor and the O's. We got a Donnie Sands, 40 out of 75. Yeah, it is, it is a great game, Brian. Here's a Satchel Page, 26 out of 50, St. Louis Browns. Where, where, does, where does Satchel Page end up on the checklist? Orioles. Yeah, Orioles. Satchel page for the O's. I think that's what we usually be doing. Post it note. Nine out of 99, Edwin Diaz. Stephen K in the Mets. No, I wonder how people are coming possibly. No, I, I, that would surprise me. You think Ellie Dela Cruz is gonna, 
Well, I mean, what what record does does Ricky have the most steals in a season? I don't think so. Because maybe he has the modern record. I guess he does have the modern record. He stole 130 in 1982. Back in 1887, Hugh Nickel had 138 stolen bases. I don't know if that counts. There's a Norisco Crook. 86 out of 199. I'm not a crook. That's going to go to Chris Parent and the Red Sox. I think it depends on the, uh, really just depends on the player, Rex. I think some players are like, yeah, records are made to be broken. That's awesome. Congrats. I think for some other players, they're definitely like. I think they're definitely like, yeah, I don't want that record to be broken. That's mine. 71 out of 199, John Smoltz. Here's Brendan Donovan, Green Wave to 99. Three boxes go. I don't know if... Yeah, I don't know what Ricky... I, I suppose if... If... Uh, if Ali De La Cruz does get close to stealing over 130 bases, then maybe, maybe we'll get some interviews from Ricky Henderson, see what he, see what he ends up saying. I'm trying to look, glance at this list really quick, but I think the last person to steal 100, Vince Coleman in 86, maybe? No, Vince Coleman, 109 in 1987. And I think that's the last time someone's stolen 100 bases. At least. A minute 30 left. Dallas up by two with the ball. This is going to be a great series. Offensive foul. Yeah, you know, we'll see if Ellie Dela Cruz starts starts threatening threatening uh threatening 130. It's kind of crazy to think. I mean, if he's already got 30, we're looking at around 90-ish. Who knows, maybe that pace can even increase. a scoreboard update when I'm ripping packs in the next box. We're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. We're almost there. Yeah, what a game, Brian. I'm kind of keeping an eye on it out of the corner of my eye. And I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of lead changes. You know, teams responding to, to whatever nothing runs. There's Brewer Hicklin, 9 out of 10. Phillies, Sean Gola with a fight in Phils. We got Jared Schuster, Orange Wave. Nine out of 25, Chris with the Braves.
And we got a Michael Toglia. 41 out of 199, logo fracture for Colorado. Travis with the Rockies. We got Shane McClanahan to 499. And a Paul Molitor autograph. Five out of 99 for the Brew Crew. Zachary with the Brewers. It's good defense by the by the Mavs. Only 20 seconds left in the game. It's going to be a huge possession for, for Minnesota here. They're down four, 17.5 seconds left. Bobby Wood Jr., two out of 50, gold wave. Bradley with the Royals. We got Avicel Garcia to 4.99. All right, two more boxes to go. A final, I guess they, there was a, some rain. They, they're resuming a game from yesterday. Cardinals beat the O's 3-1. to one. Got a lot of finals here. Uh, Braves 3 hit the Cubs, beat them 9-2 in Chicago. Same score in Toronto. Blue Jays won 92 over the White Sox. Bo Bichette, 413 foot home run. Uh, Yankees beat the Mariners 7 to 3. Juan Soto being showered with MVP chance after a two home run night. Yankees are going to re-sign Juan. I mean, I think Juan Soto is going to hit free agency. I think he wants to hit free agency, but. But I mean, Yankee Stadium is a good fit for, for, for him. All right, let's see what Minnesota's gonna do here. Burn another time. Uh, Red Sox beat the Rays eight to five. Will you Abreu, a two run homer? Phillies beat the Rangers 11 to four. Bryce Harper hitting a homer. Off the second deck. 11 to four, just improving that run differential. In extras, I think the Giants came back to beat the Pirates, nine to four. Luis Matos caps off a four run 10th for the Giants. Padres beat the Reds seven to three. Luis Arias, the, the light hitting contact hitter, but not in a lot of power, but it's his first home run as a Padre. I think maybe his first of the year. Padres beat the Reds 7-3. Padres had 14 hits in the game today. Jazz Chiz met a solo home run, and that's all That's all the Marlins needed. They beat the Brewers 1-0. Royals beat the Tigers 8-3. Nelson Velasquez had a homer. Kieran Paris had a homer in an Angels win over the Astros 2-1. Brandon Donovan apparently had a, had a three-run Little League home run, putting the Cardinals on top in uh, the, their second game. Cardinals beat the O's 5-4. Guardians beat the Mets 6-3, sweeping, uh, sweeping the Mets. I saw that comeback earlier today. Twins beat the Nats 3-2. Max Kepler, solo homer. And it's uh, here, two only two live games left. Scoreless in L.A., Diamondbacks at Dodgers, and then um, Rockies are in Oakland. They're up 2-1 in the top of the sixth. That's your baseball score update. Final two boxes. Thanks, everybody, for getting in, for hanging out, for doing this break. To 499, Nick Vespi. That's the, for Victor and the Orioles. 
Yeah, what's going on with the Rangers? Just a little uh, World Series hangover? There's Billy Williams, 14 out of 75 for the Cubs. There's a Jeter flipped around here. Might be a variation of some sort. Tris Speaker as well. All right, so Minnesota did not score on their possession. Dallas, they fouled. Or no, maybe they did score a bucket. I think they did. There's Babe Ruth, logo fracture to 4.99. Nice. I think that might be it. Two possession games, seven seconds. Unless you get a, not really gonna get, usually get the three point and the foul, right? Uh, Ed has, Edward has the Yankees, by the way. And there's a Gabriel Moreno. 22 out of 25, orange. Autograph for the Diamondbacks, Jeff Walker with Arizona. With a penultimate auto, unless we've got a bonus somewhere, which, is, which we've seen happen earlier in this case. There's Andrew Benintendi, 334 out of 499. And a bonus auto, Charles LeBlanc. Called it, Miami Marlins, it's gonna be for Rick. Rick with the bonus auto. I did. Here's an Alan Trammell, 53 out of 99. So when, when we're doing that, because we got another case loaded up, pick your team three, um, just keep that in mind. Maybe a, maybe a, a multi-auto box is possible. All right, final box coming up. Well, the Jaspi public were, were correct. Uh, I think 50 some odd percent, 54, 55% were saying, uh, we're taking Dallas to either win or, or at least cover the spread plus four and a half. They're definitely gonna cover. I gotta imagine they're gonna win unless something crazy happens here in the last 1.8. I don't know, it's a tough scenario, right? Obviously, Mike Kahn's gotta make these two free throws. Is it two? Makes the first one. Wow. He had three free throws. He missed the middle one. I mean, do you intentionally miss this one? And try to kick out for a three, maybe? It's not a lot of time to pull that something like that off. No. Congrats, Brian. So that's the makings of a really good series. If game one is any, any indication, all the back and forth, the close finish here. Mavs beat the Timberwolves, 108 to 105.
now I can actually switch to the Dodgers game. All right. Last box. Good luck, everybody. Greg Maddox to four ninety nine. Joe Maurer, possible variation. It's going to go to the twin. That's for Chad. Chris with the Braves. Right. It's only one. It's a long series. But as a neutral, I, I like the tone set in both of the East and the West. I like the tone set in game one. O'Neill Cruz, 142 out of 150. For the Buckos, that'll be for Robert. And we got Juan Marichal, 106 out of 199. Blue mini diamonds for the Giants, Brian. And back here, we got Warren Spahn. 006 out of 100 be for the Braves. And our final autograph, unless there's a bonus, is Ken Waldachuk. Rookie auto for the A's. I think might actually be having a decent season. Mm, no. Yes? Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> There's some A's pitcher that's on that rotation that's having a good season. All right, now let's see if we can get some low-numbered parallels here. Here's one, you Darvish. 19 out of 25 for the Padres. That's going to go to Brian. Yeah, I was impressed with the Pacers, too. Here's a Corbin Carroll. You know, that spread was nine and a half, and I, I, I thought, I didn't play it, but I thought, with the way the Celtics play at home, but no, Pacers were like, no, we're, we're going we're gonna to come out firing. Hopefully that overtime loss wasn't too much of a letdown, though. 369 on 499. If they can, if they can not get too low about that. Otherwise, if they if they kind of if that just kind of deflates the Pacers, you know, I mean, Celtics could probably run away with that series. But let's see let's see what their mentality is like in the next game. Rock Reigns, Dave Winfield, and that is the break. Thanks everybody. Quick little recap right here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with me. Remember, we got another case in the store right now. Pick your team three, jazbeescasebreaks.com. We got time to do it tonight. I think we're a little over halfway there. Oh, yeah, these are the city, city ones. So a lot of fun stuff there. Thanks for in a, in a ton of parallels right here as well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with me. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next baseball break. Bye-bye.